Hi, my name is Bernard Ang. Today, I will show you how to use the powerful PathWave BenchView digital multimeter software to perform electronic product characterization. To build and test electronic products or appliances, engineers use the digital multimeter to measure both long-term events such as drift and long-term signal transient events to characterize and understand their product responses and quality. There are two key features in a modern DMM to help you characterize your products. The first one is the data logging feature. It is basically an automated process of collecting data samples or measurement at a specific interval and duration over time. This is a data log trend chart of a lithium ion battery discharge profile over a duration of several hours. The second feature is the DMM's digitizing capability. Digitizing is the process of converting a continuous analog signal into a series of discrete samples or readings, providing additional insights into the signal's characteristics. When digitizing, you have to specify the sample rate, duration, and triggering condition. Digitizing often occurs within a short duration, usually less than a second, to capture a fast transient signal such as an ECG pulse as shown here. Since I'm using the DMM's data logging and digitizing features, I will connect the powerful PathWave BenchView software to the DMM via USB. I can use PathWave BenchView software to control, capture, and analyze all the data log and digitize data. Once the setup is complete, let's get into BenchView's instrument setup. There is a list of measurement choices on the instrument setting tab, such as DC-AC voltage, DC-AC current, two-wire wire resistance, capacitance, and more. For this case, I'm selecting the DC voltage. Under each measurement, I can choose auto range or a number of fixed ranges. I can also select the aperture or number of power line cycles, which essentially performs integration on the input signals to remove power line noise. The smaller the NPLC value I choose, the less time the DMM performs the integration. However, the measurement speed increases. In this case, I'm choosing 0 0.002. There are other settings, but I'll leave them as default. Let's start the measurements. As you can see, I'm getting a 5 volt measurement from the device under test. Next, let's look at BenchView's data logging screen. On the data logging settings, you have some choices on how to start the data logging. I'm just going to choose immediately with start button. You can also set your measurement intervals to be in milliseconds, seconds to hours or days. I'm setting it to minimum so it measures as fast as possible. You have choices on how to stop the data logging. I will stop by pressing the stop button. You can also set the alarm to alert you when the, your data hits upper limit or lower limit. The actions from the alert can be a computer beep, sending an email to you, or executing a batch file from your computer. Here we go. I've just started the data logging, and you can see the data captured live on the trend chart. You can perform zooming, panning, or screen auto scale while the data is collecting. You can also set markers to measure the difference in time and value between markers. Besides the trend chart in data logging, you can also view the histogram and uh, data grid charts. Now let's move on to BenchView's digitizing screen. On the digitizing setting panel, you can click on a button that can enable you to get the fastest data acquisition. The settings will automatically turn off some background processing from the DMM. In this case, I'm going to use the default sampling rate of 50k samples per second. The signal we measure from the DAT 
is basically a 1 kilohertz sine wave. Another cool feature is the trigger setting, where you can trigger to start the measurement based on either an external trigger, bus, internal signal level, or just an immediate auto trigger. I'm leaving it as a, an auto trigger. Let's start with the measurement. As you can see, it quickly captured the one second period of 50k samples. As I zoom in, you can now see the 1 kilohertz sine wave signal. Again, let's capture a modulated sine wave from the DAT. As I zoom out, you can see the modulated sine wave. Click the icon at the bottom right corner of the screen to export the captured data log or digitized signals. You can choose to export your data into MATLAB, Microsoft, Excel, Word, or CSV file format. In this case, I'm choosing the Excel file format. Here's the data output we have just captured from our measurements in Excel. That's all for this video. Please click on the link at the bottom of this video to learn more about PathWave BenchView software.